In the next few days, an independent panel, independent panel will be appointed to review the world's top climate scientists, which have been accused of making mistakes. So, what are the real facts behind this move? Why should anyone care? RT's Anastasia Churkina joins us live from New York City, not too far from that UN building. Uh, Anastasia, the UN is expected to appoint an independent panel to review climate change, the, the climate change panel. Uh, what's going on? What, will this be just another panel to overlook a panel inside a bigger panel, or is there more to the story? Well, uh, Cedric, what we have going on is the United Nations is really coming up with this uh, group of top scientists whose main job will be to overlook what goes on inside the United Nations main climate change body. Uh, the reason they're going to be uh, invented that this group is going to watch over them is that this panel is the same one that recently came out with statements saying that the Himalayan glaciers will uh, completely melt down by the year 2035. Later they said they had made a mistake and they're not actually going to melt down. So uh, now the United Nations decided to uh, really hold someone accountable and have someone watch Watch over them so they don't make these kinds of mistakes in the future. So will be, there will be this broad review taking place. But you know, um, what's important in this story is that this whole situation is expected to really uh, open up a whole new discussion on scientific censorship of sorts, on what kind of literature it is okay for scientists and these uh, b climate change bodies to use as their sources. Because as we all know, this whole situation erupted. They said the glaciers would melt down as soon as 2035 because they had cited some media interview which was taken which took place back in 1999 so there's going to be a pretty big discussion on the so-called gray literature what is it okay to use and cite as the source should it be just conventional traditional scientific text or is it okay to sometimes dig a little deeper Anastasia, you just gave us some background information of what the controversy was, uh, this, the, the question about what exactly was, was uh, good scientific information, bad scientific information. That was what the controversy revolved around. The question I have for you at this point is this. Was this climate change panel trustworthy in the first place? Well, uh, Cedric, you know, this, this body is one of the, pretty much it represents the 192 governments that reside in the United Nations. It is, uh, you know, it comes up with these reviews of climate change every couple of years. So, yes, these reports are a pretty big deal. And uh, they do really represent the world government when they come up with these, with these re reports. The, the way they operate is th these reports include works of thousands of scientists all over the world. There's a peer review process. And uh, these documents are, in fact, approved by the 192 governments that reside at the United Nations. So, uh, but, you know, uh, not a lot of people seem to know that this organization, this climate change panel that has been bashed so much, is actually not that big at all. There's only 10 full-time staff uh, that work in Geneva. All of the other people participating in this panel coming up with these reports, these several thousand page reports, are uh, basically scientists who work at universities and different research institutes all over the world and they're volunteers so it's really kind of hard to hold all of these people accountable supporters are saying so what if they made this one mistake it was a 3,000 page document in small print you know uh, it would have just taken it, what they needed to do was take out two sentences to avoid this mistake so you know yes they should have taken better care of what they were publishing but their supporters are saying this this whole story was way overblown um, Anastasia yeah. People who are opponents, critics of human-induced climate change, people who just don't believe man creates or man contributes to cli climate change, as you had mentioned a couple seconds ago, will say, well, this is just absolutely proof that this is all wrong. Climate, the, chain, the, the theory that, that man creates climate change is wrong. Uh, but let's level here. So they made this one little mistake in the report. The media went... Uh, the media and the critics of climate change went completely wild. So did the reporters who covered this story, covered Copenhagen, covered Kyoto, did they totally spin this story out of control? Well, you know, it's hard to say, of course, Cedric, that all of reporters who co covered the story had spun it out of control. Of course, we can't make those kinds of assumptions and statements. And you're right, there are people who see this whole idea of climate change as a 
theory behind a bigger project of the new world order trying to really take over the world and impose new taxes and uh, really control the world and scare people even more into something that they might not even respons be responsible for. And we have been hearing these kinds of statements a lot from people who don't support the idea of climate change at all. But uh, when it comes to the media reports, uh, a lot of scientists themselves, those who, those who uh, were beaten up by these uh, reports and those who didn't really get affected by them were saying that the media really failed to look deeper into this report that uh, you know substantially the conclusion of what this report was saying was right that you know no one can deny the fact that Himalayan glaciers are in fact melting down uh, the fact uh, you know what kind of bigger the bigger picture is going to be is of course harder to say and some scientists have said that what the media was saying was absurd and surreal and they never even you know decided to even take a peek into this report uh, and and uh, if they did, it would have been pretty hard for them to discover, you know, one little mistake on page 492 in one little sentence. So, you know, there's a lot of a lot of different sides to this. Some say lobby forces were really pushing for the media to cover the story in a certain way. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, it was definitely not one of the central predictions of this particular document. Whether or not uh, the, the, the different opinions that we have on climate change, of course, there's a whole wide range of them out there. So uh, it is going to take us another hour or so to go into all of these for sure. RT's Anastasia Churkin not, not making a mistake on page 492. Thank you uh, so much for joining us from New York today.